Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Alexey and today I have a special guest, Tai Christian. Tai is a power metal singer from power metal band which is called Lords of the Trident, the most successful power metal band on Patreon. Also, Tai has a wonderful course on vocal performance at Spectre Academy. And also he has another wonderful course at Spectre Academy which is called DIY band. I don't know if you've noticed this, but being in a band is expensive. You need money to print out t-shirt designs. You need money to have someone help you book your tour. You need money for road cases for your instruments, for branding, for recording, and more. And unless you've got one of those hip hop music video money guns that shoot $100 bills in the air, all of that money is gonna have to come out of your pocket. <sighs> if, if, if only there was some sort of marginally attractive internet extrovert who could teach you how to do these things yourself. I, I mean, that sort of a course would save a band, I don't know, thousands of dollars? It's really too bad that doesn't exist. I, I'm sorry, what? Say again. I did? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, bands of all ages, your wish has come true. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to save yourself thousands of dollars by becoming a DIY band. The two courses in this series cover everything from doing your own branding, to printing your own merch, to organizing and executing your own tour, to making your own road cases, and more. If your band wants to get out of the garage and onto the road and keep most of your money, this is the course for you. Say goodbye to flushing thousands of dollars down the drain and take complete control of your band's trajectory and future. Purchase this course and you too will learn the secrets to becoming a DIY band. It's a huge honor to have you on my YouTube channel today, Ty. And let's start our interview. So my first question is how you became a power metal singer. Yeah, so... Uh... I've always been a singer. I've always uh, sang from when I was actually really little. It was uh, <laughs> apparently annoying at my daycare. I would sing like day oh day like all all the time. <laughs> and so my my family, when I was younger, put me into singing lessons. And um, and then when I was in uh, um, like when I was in high school, I started a garage band. And uh, it was that was more like on the you know kind of rock and kind of funk side of things. And it wasn't until this band started up in college that I really even had any interest uh, in metal at all, really. Like, I actually, I I, I was not like a, a metal guy, you know, kind of going into this. It was uh, more that my my roommate was really heavily into metal. And and he kind of, we, we made the band uh, kind of a recording project at first. And <clears throat> we didn't have anybody to sing. And he said, hey, you, you know, Ty, you know how to sing. Like, and I'm like, yeah, well, I sing like alternative rock, like Pearl Jam kind of stuff. Like, and he's like, well, you could do like the wow kind of stuff. Couldn't you? And I was like, well, I don't know, maybe. And so he, he threw me in front of a mic and uh, the rest is history. So, <laughs> but uh, you know, since then I've come to really enjoy, uh, you know, heavy metal, power metal. And I've been, I've really gotten into it. Uh, uh, and I've been actually, pretty actively taking uh, opera lessons as well to kind of strengthen my voice and to get better technique for my, uh, for my regular, for my singing in, in power metal. So my next question is how you got into metal. Yeah. Um, it was, it really was living with my, <clears throat> so, so one of the other, uh, uh, one of the, the lead guitarists in the band uh, is a guy that I basically roommated with in college in junior year. And we would, <laughs> and I, at the time I was not into metal, but we'd sit like kind of back to back. He'd have his computer. I have my computer and he'd say like, Oh, do, you know, do you mind if we play a little music while I study? It's like, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So he'd be playing something and I'd, and I'd look back and I'd be like, Aki, what, what band is this? He's like, Oh, it's Iron Maiden. I'm like, Oh, okay. This is, this is pretty good. You know? And then, Oh, Aki, what, what band is this? Oh, this is Dio. Oh, I really, oh, I really like this, you know, and, and the more and more that he played for me, the more and more I realized I was like, I think actually, I think I like metal, you know, I think a, a lot of people have the idea, a lot of people who are not in the community or who don't like metal initially have the idea that all metal is like, uh, you know, 
angry dudes with long hair and like spikes and like eh, eh, like you know <laughs> singing like that and it, metal is such a huge huge genre um so many subgenres that i think no matter what type of music that you say you like to listen to i think there's something for you in metal even if you just like to listen to classical music i mean there's there's all sorts of you know power metal classical renditions of stuff like that. This I think I really think there's something for everybody. What does it take nowadays to create a metal band? So in this case, I want to ask you: Should you create a real metal band nowadays, or you can create a studio project like one man band? Yeah, yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so you know, in, in general, I would say that I, I, you know I, I wouldn't say that one is necessarily better than the other. Um, it, it really is do do what you what you enjoy and do what you have time for. Uh, creating a actual metal band that you know goes out on the road, performs, and uh, and 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 does that sort of thing, you know, tours and stuff like that, right? That that creates a, that that's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. Uh, and if if it's easier for someone or if it's more ful- fulfilling for someone to just you know make a studio project, then I'd say go for the studio project. Me personally, I really love performing. I love performing in front of people. So a studio project alone would probably not like scratch that itch. It wouldn't be enough for me just to, just to be in a studio project. I'd want to, I'd want to perform it. Um, you know, and so what, what does it take to, <clears throat> to make a metal band nowadays in terms of a live band? Uh, you know, I think the, the main the main theme and the main reason that we've been successful uh, is essentially we uh, we've stuck around for long enough, you know, where people are finally like, all right, I guess I'll listen to Lords of the Tried it. Uh, we've outlived a lot of other bands, but the main thing that we've done that I think is different is we've always been producing something. You know, I'm always working on the next YouTube video. I'm, we're always working on the next single, the next album. Um, we're very conscious about putting things out, and putting things out a lot. So a lot of videos, a lot of collaborations with other people, a lot of uh, interviews like this, right? We always want to make sure that, uh, that, you know, people see Lords of the Trident constantly in their nudes, in their news feeds, because the, you know, the rule, the old rule of advertising is you have to see something like eight times before you actually start to, you know, act on it, remember it. So the more that, you know, the more that your band can be seen, the more things you can put out, the more ideas that you can, you know, create, I think the better opportunity you have to grow as a band. Um, now, obviously that takes a lot of work and a lot of planning ahead of time. So, you know, being in a band is is definitely not an easy uh, choice. You have to do a lot of stuff yourself, but at least for me, it's very, very rewarding. So my next question is, what is the best way to promote your music online? Um, definitely 100% promote your, your music online. Uh, labels. Uh, so labels generally don't care about, you know, oh, I've sent you this CD. Most of the time, <clears throat> that stuff never gets listened to. Nowadays, and even back back in the day earlier, labels would would basically find stuff that was already popular, find bands that the bands themselves had worked hard and, you know, created an, a, a small name for themselves before they would ever approach you. Right. So send, sending uh, singles or, or even albums to labels that you don't already have a direct connection with is it's, it's just a waste of time. Like they're never going to, they're never, <clears throat> never going to listen to them. So, Promoting yourself online is probably the best way to to get your. If you do want to go in the path of like signing with a label, then promoting yourself online is easily the best way to go. And and again, to do that consistently, right? You can drop one album and promote the heck out of it online. Cool, okay, and a bunch of people see it, but <clears throat> maybe not the you know maybe not as many people see it as you want. You know, you, you can't just sit around for like four years writing the next record and it, com- it comes out and you expect it to be as big of a response as the first one, you know, or, or bigger than the first one. You have to consistently be in people's attention in order to kind of build that awareness uh, again for labels. If, if you want to go the label route, we never we actually sent <clears throat> material to labels 
um, in the early days of the band because I didn't understand how labels worked. So, you know, I sent a lot of unsolicited singles and season. I didn't never heard a thing, not one, not even one response email, nothing. Um, and it was, we didn't get approached by a label until we had already made a, a lot of content. So we've already made, you know, a number of albums. So we made a ton of music videos and a ton of videos online. That's when we got approached by a label. So, you know, if, if that's the way that you want to go, the best way to promote yourself online is, <clears throat> is, is it, it depends on your band and it depends on your, your um, market, but, but consistency is the number one thing. It doesn't matter if you're on TikTok, doesn't matter if you're on Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is, consistency is, is the key to uh, getting through to people, to getting through to people on your feed. So my next question is, what tips can you give to young metal bands on creating a fan base? Yeah, I think the best way to create a fan base for a young metal band is first and foremost to decide like what your tone is going to be. Um, a, a lot of businesses do this, right? So um, a great example is Wendy's on Twitter, especially, right? A couple of years ago, actually probably longer than that, but 10 plus years ago, Wendy's decided that their whole PR angle was that they were going to be like sassy, right? So when they made posts, they would, you know, make kind of like sassy posts uh, that, that tag other uh, companies. They like start war, you know, with other companies. And that was great publicity uh, for Wendy's, but they they had a tone choice, right? They were always sassy online. So if if your band picks a tone where you're like, okay, we're, we're serious, but we're a little funny, you know, for serious, for the most part, a little funny here and there, or, or maybe your tone wants to be like, we're always over the top, you know? So for example, every post would be like, you know, we're, we're out fighting dragons and we're thinking of you fans or, you know, something like that. But the tone that you pick will attract certain types of people. So if you wanted to build a fan base online, you know, picking a tone and and picking the type of people that are attracted to that tone and attracted to, you know, the music that you type, you, you want to make sure that the music, the tone and the people that you're trying to attract are all congruent are all people that are all like reasonable targets. Right. Uh, and and then when people engage with your music, engage with them back. The, the easiest way to create a super fan is to have a conversation, right? So somebody somebody messages you or somebody posts on your page or leaves you a comment on YouTube, you know, say, oh, I really like this song, you know, always, always, always message them back and say, you know, oh, thanks, you know, and maybe start up a conversation. Oh, was this your favorite song on the record? What did you like about it? That kind of thing. Um, the number one thing, like, for a fan of somebody's music is if the artist interacts with them, you know, if the artist actually talks to them, it's like, oh, my God, I'm having a conversation with so and so, you know, like, imagine if uh, if if Bruce Dickinson, you know, posted like, you know, you post on as well, like, hey, man, you're a great singer. And he's like, oh, thanks, mate. I think you're a great, I think you're a really great person too. What kind of, you know, what song do you like? You're like, oh my God, I'm having a conversation with Bruce Dickinson. This is the coolest thing in the world. So, you know, if somebody, if, if you want to uh, grow super fans and create a fan base that, you know, where, where one super fan will tell his five friends and then somebody here will tell their five friends and it'll multiply. The best way is, is that human connection, right? Is to make direct connections with people and and to interact with them uh, and and make them feel seen, I think. Uh, and, and then from there, it's it's really just one person at a time, one show at a time, slowly building that fan base up and just kind of nurturing the idea that, you know, hey, the fan base can talk to each other. Hey, let's make let's all make friends. <clears throat> you know, starting a discord channel is a great way to do that. Like throw a bunch of people in there. And now all of a sudden a bunch of friendships form because everybody's talking together on this shared topic. So so, yeah, it, it really is one person at a time and just direct connection, direct in interaction with fans. So my next question is, can one-man bands become successful? Um, I think one-man projects can be successful. Um, the, the, the issue, you know, with one-man projects is that unless you decide that you want to throw together a backing band full of hired guns, full of people that you hire, 
you know, to go on tour. Um, then the expectation from from fans is that is always that like, okay, all I'm going to get out of this person is just music. I'm never going to see them live. I'm never going to get to experience this music live. And I think there's, uh, personally, I think there is a little bit of a, a letdown when that happens. You know, like, uh, there, there's a couple of electronic artists that I really like. Um, one of them, Starcadian, uh, kind of out of New York. And, you know, he he at, at some point did a little bit of actual uh, shows and touring and he'll do, you know, a show maybe every couple of years, that kind of a thing. But he, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't go out and play. And so for me, I'm a little disappointed. It's like, I'll never be able to see that live. So my preference is always to have like, uh, to have a full band. Um, that, that being said, I, you know, there, there's no reason that one man projects can be successful if a person is, uh, I mean, if the music's good enough, if the PR is good enough, if, if it reaches people. And, and I think, I don't think there's any shame in, you know, thinking about hiring a backing band and going out on the road. There's a lot of really, um, in, in like, uh, the, the new retro wave kind of genre, there's a lot of one man artists that will do a full back and go on the road and, and, uh, be successful, reach, reach some more people. Um, but yeah, my, my preference is always, you know, do a full band if you can, because then you can do live performances. If live performances aren't your thing, if you just want to make music and you don't want to play it live, you, you can be successful. You got to think a lot more, uh, closely about your PR campaigns about how you reach people and about how you interact. So my next question is how to get a geek on a stage for a young metal band. Yeah, um, that's a great question. So obviously for a young metal band, you know, a, a band just starting out, the first place you're going to need to look is just your own hometown. You know, you're not going to go on tour quite yet and you really shouldn't go on tour for a while, right? Until you're until you have a little bit more uh experience under your belt. The easiest way to do this, the easiest way to get a gig uh is to go to other bands shows and just make friends with them. So if there are bands that are playing local bands that are playing in your area and they're like the same or similar genres or you think that your band and their band would do really well together on uh on a show on a local show like where you know it makes sense where is, let's say you're a punk band they're a punk band and you're like oh we should do a show together because it's a punk night or you're like a traditional heavy metal band and they're a traditional heavy metal band or something like that you know so the easiest way to do it is to is to go out to the shows make friends with that band and then five other bands in your city just go go to all their shows make sure they see you there make sure you talk to them and then let them know like, Hey, I I've got a band uh, and I'd love to put together, you know, like a show maybe with you and us sometime and see what they say. Um, and then as, as a young metal band who doesn't have any following yet, let's say in your city, the best thing you can do is get, get a bunch of these bands together, like, you know, two, three bands uh, and then add them all to a bill with you. So the way that you do that, uh, and the easiest way is once these bands all say yes. So like band A says, yeah, let's play a show. Band B says, yeah, let's play a show. You get it. You get a date together and then you go to a venue or you email a venue. Right. And you say, hey, I have my band, this band, this band and this band all set to go. All we need is a place to, to play because most what, what what happens is i did i did booking for a while right and so what happens is most young bands will email a place and they say hey we want to play a show and we're saying okay what like what's the show oh us and like maybe you could find some other bands for us to play with it's like dude i don't have time i've got like 500 emails right now i i can't be the one to find you a band you know you've got to go out and do that and, oh, okay well you know but if somebody came to me and said, hey, I've got these four bands or I've got these three bands, we're looking for this night. Now, that's an easy way for me to say yes or no. Right. Uh, so if the 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 best way for, for young bands to do this is really like get a full bill together, make it very, very easy for somebody to say yes. So, you know, and, and then the, the yeses will come. 
but make sure that they're all local bands to start. Make sure you can pull out, you know, 20, 30 people to start. And don't be afraid of playing a little earlier on, like, say, a Thursday uh, instead of a Friday or Saturday. You're probably not going to get those prime slots right away. So my next question is, what tips can you give to uh, metal musicians on making money? <laughs> oh, boy. How do you make money in the music industry? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, you, you sell your guitar. I think that's the way to do it. <laughs> No, I, uh, you know, the, be the best thing you can do, I, I see a lot of people that grumble about like, oh, you know, we only get 0. 0.0005 cents from every Spotify play and it should be more and blah, 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 you know, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of artists out there who, and a lot of new artists out there who refuse to, you know, put their money on streaming. Oh, because they're going to, they're just going to rip you off and blah, 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 blah. Um, I would tell people if you want to make money and you want to make consistent money, don't, don't do that. Be careful about falling down that trap. Now, should we get more for digital plays on Spotify or, you know, or, or any other different, uh, or, or Deezer or, you know, wherever you get title, wherever you get your, your, your music. Yeah, I, I think so, you know, but that we don't really have any power or say in it. And the number one way to get somebody to listen to your music and buy your music is to allow them to have an interaction with it first. If you don't put your music up online uh, and you don't allow people to listen to it and to see what you're about, then you're not going to give them an opportunity to buy the music, right? The way that, the way that 90% of, of purchasing music and making money off of music uh, works nowadays is, you know, you go and listen to the band first. And you decide if you like the record. You know, at least I do. You know, I'm not going to go out and just buy a random giant LP for, you know, $25 or something like that. I'm going to listen to it first and I'm going to make sure I like the band. Or I'm going to go to a show and make sure I like the band before I buy the music, right? So people who who put their music, here's like, I don't want to put my music online. I don't want people to steal it, blah, blah. It, that's, that's super dumb. Um, we... We have our music available everywhere on pretty much every platform. And yeah, we get, you know, a little bit of money here, a little bit of money here, a little bit of money here. But then when you pile it all together, it is actually a decent sum um, of, of money per year that we get from people, you know, streaming, downloading. Um, I think Bandcamp is an absolute must, you know, for any band, no matter what genre, put your, put your music on Bandcamp. If you want to make money, because Bandcamp makes it super easy for people to to immediately purchase the album. There's been a bunch of albums and a bunch of artists where I've listened like one or two songs and I'm like, yeah, 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 let's buy it. Let's buy this album, you know, and I can do that in one click on Bandcamp. I, you know, I don't have to worry about anything. So Bandcamp, absolutely put your put your music on Bandcamp if you want to make money. Um, I think, you know, the 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 best, at least for me, the, the stuff that's worked for us is we make our music available. We make a lot of YouTube content and a lot of uh, music videos, and we make everything available basically for free for people to, to listen to. And, and we just, uh, we, we, we try to get our music in as many places as possible, um, use it in as many different ways so that when people interact with it, it's, it's again, that rule of, you know, eight times you have to interact with something before you, actually do some. So when they interact with it over and over, they decide, okay, maybe I purchase the record or maybe I'll, maybe I really like this album and I'll get the vinyl. Uh, and then, and then after that, you know, making money, a lot of it is at your merch booth. Honestly, uh, if you are a band that goes out and plays pay absolutely extra attention to the merch that you sell, the merch booth setup, making things easy for people to, to buy, making sure you have more than one shirt, all that sort of, you, you can print your own shirts. It's very, very easy. Um, you know, I've got a whole course on like the, the DIY merch setup, um, at, at Spectre Academy. So I, I go into really deep detail on that, but like for, for an example, uh, we, we played a show, um, a little while back, there were about 300 people there. Uh, we had a, we had a $500, guarantee it was it was a madison show so it was local we didn't have to travel it was you know it was in our hometown so we got 500 at the door and there were 300 people there um if we didn't have a killer merch setup that would have been all we would have made that night but at the merch booth alone just at the merch booth we made two thousand dollars so we made essentially four times at the merch booth 
what we made at the door. And that always happens. No matter where you are on the road, you'll make $10 at the door and you'll make $100 at the merch booth, right? The merch booth is always 10 times, uh, the four or five or six times the amount of money comes in that way. So if you want to, if you're a touring band or if you're a band that plays live shows and you want to make money, make good merch and pay very close attention to how things are laid out uh, at the merch booth. The last thing I say, I'll say in terms of making money is once you have, you know, a small fan base, I'd recommend putting together a Patreon uh, for, for any band, for any project. Um, it, and for people who don't know what Patreon is, it's essentially a fan club that allows you to, you know, give a project or give a creative person, you know, a dollar a month, $5 a month, $10 a month, and you get prizes in return. Um, you know, a lot of bands will, approach me when I talk about Patreon and they'll say, oh, you know, I, I mean, I don't think our fan base is big enough, blah, 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 blah. And I tell them, look, you may not have a big fan base now, but Patreon can grow with you. And even if you're making an extra, you know, five bucks a month, making an extra five bucks a month is better than not making an extra five bucks a month. You know, I don't know any musician out there. I don't know any band who would like turn down an extra dollar just oh no 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 it's not worth it it's not worth it. it's like no dude you have you need to fill your tank with gas you have to buy strings you have to like there's there's expenses to being in a band you don't want extra money so so yeah i you know recommend every single band look at a patreon uh and again that's another thing that i've uh, i go into pretty deep on the youtube on my youtube series and on uh the specter academy stuff um so yeah making money uh it's you can you can make it a very diy thing and and it's definitely possible even though it is very very hard (laughs) so my next question is what is your opinion on piracy i I love it pirate my music pirate the hell out of my music steal as much of my music as you want please um i i i would not know as many bands as i know right now, if I didn't pirate a bunch of music when I was younger, you know, nowadays, right? Nowadays, stuff like Spotify and Bandcamp and Pandora and all sorts of streaming platforms have made it super, like, it, it's it's almost killed piracy, right? Because it's super easy. If you want to listen to Lords of the Trident, you go to Bandcamp and you type Lords of the Trident, and within 30 seconds, you can listen to Lords of the Trident. You can go to Spotify, type in Lords of the Trident, or type in any artist, really, and within 30 seconds, you can start listening to, you know, any any artist. So there's not as much like file swapping piracy out there nowadays as there used to be. But honestly, steal steal my music. Like my idea is that the music is is not the product, right? I think people need to nowadays, musicians need to take the idea out of their heads that their music is a, is their product. It's not. What it is, is their marketing, right? Their music is their marketing. If you've got great music that people want to steal, let them steal it. Because then when they, you know, maybe they steal one record, okay. But then maybe they turn into a super fan and join your Patreon and give you $15 a month. You would have made, what, maybe 10 bucks from somebody legitimately buying your CD instead of stealing it. But now this person has become a super fan and now they're giving you $15 a month every month and you're making way more money off of their fandom, you know, and maybe they buy a couple shirts and maybe they want the patch and, and, you know, so you, they make a lot more money. You make a lot more money off of their fandom than you make off of one CD interaction, you know? And it's the same thing with, with putting your music online, like the more opportunity people have to hear it, the more that they will engage with you in other ways and, and, you know, buy your stuff, join your Patreon. So I love piracy. I think, yeah, I think people should pirate more. <laughs> and my final question is, so now we have YouTube and we have different kinds of online academies. And in this case, should you have a sound engineer? Because right now you can learn or about mixing, producing, recording, and mastering yourself online. Yeah, I I think it is. Um, it's it's not imperative that you have a a sound en- engineer to like mix your stuff. If you really want to mix your album yourself, you can learn how to do that. 
I mixed the first two records myself and I didn't know it. Like I, I didn't know anything, anything at all. I didn't take any courses. I didn't watch. I watched barely watched any YouTube videos. I basically just played around and big surprise. The albums didn't sound super good, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's not crucial that you have a sound engineer if you want to go that route. But I would very, 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 very highly recommend that you get a good sound engineer for your uh, recordings. And and the, the big reason is because it's a second set of ears, right? You're When you're making music, when you're recording the music and when you're like listening to the music, you're too close to it to really hear it for what it is. You're too close to the the songs that you've created emotionally to make the right decisions about the mix. And you really want somebody else who has no connection to you other than like you're paying them to do a job to, to give it to you straight and to make a good mix. Now, you know, just like getting a good tattoo, you have to shop around, you have to listen to people's mixes and you have to really find somebody who works with you and work with your, of the way that you record and stuff like that. But I would highly, highly, highly recommend finding a good mixing agent instead of mixing it yourself. Um, not to say that you can't mix it yourself. You can. And there's a lot of people who are really good at that. But I don't trust my own ears with my own music anymore. And I'll only mix something if it's not like, if it's not super important. You know what I mean? If it's if it's just going in a YouTube video and that's it, I'll mix it myself. If I'm going to sell it on Bandcamp, I want somebody else mixing that. Thank you so much, Ty, for such a wonderful interview. It was a huge pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks for having me.